nothing wrong with being strong. The best athletes weren't, weren't the athletes that were working out with weights. The best athletes were those who were not lifting weights and who had more of a, an athletic looking physique. Now the reason and the purpose of this is to show you how you can take an exercise that you might find in the gym if you're bodybuilding and turn it into a functional exercise for life and movement. So if you want good functional muscle and you want to. Here I did some experimenting trying to work more on a hip drop instead of a chest drop. So I took a ball, elevated surface, and just played around with feet. That's all of this together. So if you want that curl aspect to be able to focus on your biceps, do it in a more integrated and functional way. Exercises like this are what we do here at Indie Wellness all the time. Stop doing this stupid shit, do this instead. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm actually very, very excited to be making this video because the weather is incredible in Austin, Texas right now. Let me see what it is actually. Dang it. Okay, 76, mostly sunny, no wind at all. It's like frustratingly nice out. Like it, I can't feel the air on my skin. Anyways, what, this guy talks about weather to open up his videos? What is he, the worst fucking YouTuber ever? Uh, no, I, I wanted to talk today about a term that I've come up with when talking about charlatans or just people in the space who want to convolute uh, strength training, whether it is for athletics or for the general population. So the first thing we're going to look at is uh, athletics. And this was a video that Mark Bell had posted about another guy, another trainer, a famous trainer. Uh, whose last name was Marinovich. <clears throat> and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. But here, we're just going to check out what he has to say. The best athletes weren't the, weren't the athletes that were working out with weights. The best athletes were those who were not lifting weights and who had more of a, an athletic looking physique. Those players who had been lifting weights for a length of time had an abundance of muscle. But uh, it, it, he discovered that it wasn't the, the amount of muscle that really made an athlete a, a, a good athlete. So, all right, let's, let's get to the, the opposing argument. Now, this is from Eddie Cohn, who's uh, known as one of the greatest power lifters of all time. There's nothing wrong with being strong. Mm -hmm. People forget strength. Get really freaking strong. Who sits on the bench because they're too strong? <laughs> You don't. Yeah. That's what it's about. Get freaking strong. Find a, I, don't, I don't care if you're fucking an arm wrestler. Get freaking strong. I don't care what you do. Get freaking strong. You got to lift weights. Get freaking strong. It won't let you down. Never, ever, ever. Ever. And you feel good. Mm -hmm. And you feel powerful. And you feel confident. And that's, that's what will take you through. If, you're, if you don't feel those in regular life, you won't make it anywhere. So... Um my, my take on this is that it seems as though in every occasion where someone is arguing against conventional strength training uh, for athleticism or for athletic gains, they misconstrue or completely forget the idea of phasic structures of training. So the, the most common uh, structure of training created by Tudor Bumpa, like, again, looked at by Verka Shansky. I mean, these are guys who, who brought the, the idea of periodization to, to everyone. The, these are Soviets. Um, but it really kind of just makes sense. So you have a phase where you introduce weight training to someone. And it can be called a bunch of different things, but the, what I was taught it was called was anatomical adaptation. And from there, you're, you're essentially preparing the tendons, ligaments, everything, the entire organism is what they call it uh, in Soviet texts, texts. You're preparing it for the uh, adaptations it will make uh, in the next phase. In the next phase, you're taking these movements or at least like the global idea of these movements, you're narrowing them down a little bit more. 
uh, to, to cause hypertrophy. And this is, you know, what, what some would call an accumulation phase, even just a hypertrophy phase. Uh, in the conjugate method, you would call this repetition effort, right? This is, uh, you could call it muscular endurance and then into hypertrophy. And then you get into what's called a strength phase. Uh, and that's where you kind of, you try and actualize that new muscle that you gained, whether it be from the anatomical adaptation phase or whether it be from the uh, hypertrophy or muscular endurance phase, you try and create a better neurological connection to that muscle via strength movements, typical strength movements, usually squats, deadlifts, uh, power cleans, overhead presses, things that test our ability to produce force, not just rate of force production, which will be touched on in the next phase. The next phase of your training, you're trying to now take that strength and turn it into speed and turn it into power. And that's realization of, of, of power. It's rate of force development. And what's interesting is like, you can kind of develop all of these things at the same time in like a concurrent or conjugate method. However, when you have an off season and Marinovich, by the way, uh, his son, Todd Marinovich, who this is, this is kind of a side story. Uh, Marinovich comes across as like this know-it-all uh, around strength and conditioning, which he may or may not be, but he basically destroyed his son. Uh, there's an interesting story. I think ESPN did a 30 for 30 on him or some sort of documentary wherein uh, Marinovich took his son from birth and tried to live his life through him uh, and make him into the best possible NFL quarterback he could. Anyways, that's beside the point. What Marinovich fails to understand is like, you can get stronger and then actualize all of that strength uh, into sp specific attributes on the field. Uh, and that's what off-season lifting is all about. Now, there are certain sports. So what I found was really frustrated when I was coaching grapplers uh, in, in the weight room was that they would have a match like every month and a serious match. Uh, so we didn't really ever have a chance to be like, hey, let's get jacked here, let's get strong. Football, the beauty of football is that there is an off, se <clears throat> is that there is an off season. So you want to give yourself a chance to grow and get strong. And then when you get close to the season, just focus on football, just focus on football specific movements. It's, it's so wild to me that these concepts keep popping up as if we haven't discussed them for the past half century, more, longer than that. Like this is, this is literally elementary periodization, understanding, understanding this sort of stuff. And consistently you see these coaches and, and charlatans come up, not that I'm calling Marinovich a charlatan here really, but you see them come up and they just, they come after standardized practices um, because it's not specific. This is where I talk about this term weaponized specificity. It's, it's incredibly, uh, it's a very frustrating thing. Okay, I'm gonna get on the barbell here, start warming up for some snatches. And then I wanna talk about the, the next one because we, we, we covered athletics there uh, and, and, and the, the language around athletics. Uh, and strength conditioning around athletics, but there's, there's one around you know, the general population, which I see all the time. Oh boy. Yeah, just, you guys, just an incredible day here. Wow, I'm actually genuinely excited to snatch right now. So I have a uh, seminar tomorrow. First one I've done since I was in uh, England and Scotland, and it's free. I announced it on the community page, but it's free and there's 55 people showing up. It's the biggest seminar I've ever done. So I'm definitely gonna take some videos of that, share it with you guys. Um, 
obviously, you know, I haven't been up to, to par with my snatches and clean and jerks. So what I'm doing now is just, I want to work on my technique um, so that kind of like as a warm up for tomorrow. I, I just like, I took a look at my old YouTube videos and I've been teaching the snatch and the clean and jerk for so long now. You know, it's crazy. All right, let's put a little weight on here. Totally unrelated. I was at a bar the other night and I was sitting with some friends and there was this other guy that I had just met. For some reason, we started talking about animals and I brought up and, and like beavers were brought up and I was like talking about how cool beavers are and this dude kind of like interrupted me and was like no nah, dude beavers like totally fuck up the ecosystem and, and destroy the ecosystem I'm, I'm like no they fucking don't dude their dams can can change uh ecosystems for sure but they also prevent from, they prevent water damage to the, the edges of a stream. So like the, the wear of a stream is actually much less, which allows certain animals and a lot of different plants can now grow near those banks of those streams. And they can grow there for, you know, 30, 40, 50 years, for generations, changing entire ecosystems for the better. Like every animal has its place. I was so mad at this dude. <laughs> just so you guys know where my my head is at when I'm in social places like I just I love beavers dude they, they fucking rock they're a sick animal comment below if you're a beaver guy okay so let's get into this uh this next portion and this is like my bread and butter right because these this is like I feel like this is uh charlatanism um to a T but I, I don't want to like attack so much. But anyways, here we go. Here is uh, exhibit A. Welcome back to our Stop Doing Stupid Shit series. Now the reason and the purpose of this is to show you how you can take an exercise that you might find in the gym if you're bodybuilding and turning it into a functional exercise for life and movement. So if you want good functioning muscles and you want your body to feel good, do this instead of that. First thing, I have to address, I'm just gonna call them humpers. So you see people here, they're thrusting their hips up. They might have heavy weights on them. Both of these legs are perpendicular and moving together. That's not how we move. Stop doing this stupid shit. Do this instead. We still get the extension through the hips. We're incorporating the core. We're incorporating the upper body. Much more functional. It's integrated. We're getting the foot involved. Your body will thank you later. Stop doing stupid shit. Welcome back okay, to our Stop so, Doing Stupid Shit series. Now so what's important to understand here, guys, is like the verb... The verbiage being used, the lexicon being used. Like if you were to dissect it, right? They have their get out of jail free card saying, oh no, 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 we don't want, our goal isn't to have people grow muscle, it's to be more functional and live longer, right? So if you wanna grow more muscle, you can go do that. But notice how every attribute that they give to that movement is negative. Every single attribute is negative. What they're doing is right, what you're doing is wrong. Even though our goals may be different, in, in theory, uh, the goal of having a good and healthy life, well, you're failing at it and we're winning at it. Now, the, the hip thrust, okay, is a movement that can be loaded like very heavily and it can focus on your glutes, your hips, your low back. It's a very effective movement uh, at isolating what you want to get stronger and bigger, okay, and, and what you want to, to add function to as it pertains to the, the kinetic chain. Like, <laughs> okay, it's, it's effective in that way. By just being like, hey, um, this, is, this works globally. This works the entire kinetic chain, a movement where we strap a band, which can hardly be loaded at all, put two dumbbells in our hand and do something like this. Like, look, oh, we get the extension. I think that that is crazy. I think that is insane. To equate those two at all is out of this world crazy. 
And, and it's like, okay, well, why do I have such an issue with this sort of thing? Because it's hard enough for people to get in the gym. And you take a movement that's a staple exercise and you say, stop doing stupid shit. And then you say, well, here's our get out of, free, uh, get out of jail free card. Well, you know, if you want to be bigger and stronger, like maybe that's a good movement for you. But we're worried about health here. When the person's like, well, I'm worried about health. You know? There's a car here. Oh, never mind. Um, anyways, here's another video. So here's an exercise you can throw right out the window and stop wasting your time with. These dumbass preacher curls. Instead, I want you to do something like this. You're gonna get into this curl position to still get the curl you're looking for, then rotate up here and drive. So now we're connecting the foot, the knee, the hip, the chest, your bicep, your pecs, all of this together. So you want that curl aspect to be able to focus on your biceps. Do it in a more integrated and functional way. Exercises. <laughs> you want to isolate your bicep? You're an idiot for thinking that. Everything we do has to be global. Everything we have to do has to in include the entire body because everything in life includes the entire body. Remember what I said earlier about phases of training. It is impossible for these people to take anything beyond their myopic view of, of fitness, which is what do you look like now? What do you feel like now? And how can we alter it right now? It's impossible to say, hey, if we can take this time and get these muscles stronger in this, or this way, we can then later organize it into some sort of global health, some sort of full body, full kinetic chain piece of health. It is impossible for people to, to speak like this. And I would venture to say the reason why they, they can't do that is because it's not, it's not something that's very tangible right away. It takes a lot of time. This is, this is very base level fucking strength and conditioning. And like, it frustrates me because when I was taking these classes on strength and conditioning, like this sort of speech would get shot down immediately by like our professor or whoever was running the class. Like it's just, it's, it was just like simplistic understanding of macro cycles of training that seemed to have completely gone away with the times of very fast and entertaining reels. It's incredibly frustrating. So here I go, I put on my on the loudest possible shoe on the market. And uh, yeah, you guys, I don't know if you know this, uh, I've been sponsored by here. They're incredibly, uh, like, they're like an aggressive company that I just feel I'm so happy to be a part of. Like, I met the CEO, I met their CMO, um, and like the, the way that they were talking to me about like their mission and their goals, like it's just, it's exciting. It's an exciting thing to be a part of. And I like the shoe, I do. I remember I got, they sent me a pair of shoes. I wasn't sponsored by them and I was ready to absolutely shit on the shoe. I was ready to like do a review and have it be bad. You guys can check it out. Uh, and I ended up hitting a PR that I haven't hit or hitting a lift that I haven't hit in two years. So I was like, oh, well, I guess, I guess they're okay. Oof. Fired up. Okay. I have one more video for you guys. That is, that is so funny. And I, it could have been how my mind was. Like, cause I, I saw it at like three in the morning in my bed, like scrolling, just doom scrolling. Like, an, like a, the zoomer that I am. And I was laughing so hard at it that I, 
I immediately pressed saved and put it away because I was like, I want to share this with you guys. Um, <laughs> and I don't know if it was that funny. I could have just been delirious and it was three in the morning, but I'm going to pull it up right now. <laughs> Holy shit. Okay, here we go. Oh my God. Just seeing the thumbnail. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Pressing play right now. What's up, guys? Another way we train the art of chiropractic in KTC is in the gym. The average human head weighs about 10 to 12 pounds, so grab a kettlebell, hang on to that thing, and work on putting your body in the best position so that you don't compromise your own spine. Thoracic adjustments. A lot of the times we're in a lunge position for this, with most of our weight being on the front foot. So I like to use single leg weighted RDLs for this to work the posterior chain, and then also to work the front, so the pecs, the triceps, to get that thrust in. So working on push-ups. And then here I did some experimenting, trying to work more on a hip drop instead of a chest drop. So I took a ball and then an elevated surface and just played around with feeding in. Bro, okay, so <laughs> the holding the kettlebell thing and then the lunge thing, like here, I, I will say this, like if I wanted, if I was to have like a chiropractic, I think that would be actually a pretty good one. Cause like they're so into it that they're like always thinking about it. That's fine. But again, this is weaponized specificity, right? The, the idea of training is that it is general and that the broader you can bring this general, uh, it can allow for much more robust gains as we decide to take it and become more specific. Okay. That is, that is the, that's the, that's what this whole thing is about. If you want to go about it a different way, you would just only do specific training. And so the way that I think about it is like this. Um, if you wanted to only do specific training, you would essentially be, let's say you wanted to train basketball players. You would essentially have them wear weighted vests, shoot weighted basketballs, uh, have bands around their waists, which are training methodologies that people actually use, but that's completely specific in nature. So this woman who's holding a kettlebell, practicing her cracks, her neck cracks, that's 100% specific in nature. Like, yes, there is a function at play here and you can actually get better at it. But the idea of training is that you can get better at specific functions by doing general practices. And I think that's just, it's wild that I need to continuously say this on this channel, because like I've said previously on this video, that is like day one shit when you, when you like get your CSCS or any sort of uh, strength and conditioning certification like worth its salt. That's like, this is like elementary understanding of strength and conditioning and yet it's not a, a part of the lexicon of uh, Instagram. Um, let's add some weight here. All right, so this style of warming up. I'll kind of explain as I go, but I like to think of it as like, I'm off on like a moderate speed jog. So I'll do a rep, put the bar down, take a few breaths and then do another rep. And then I'll just kind of Keep doing this to get warm. Obviously it's light enough weight to where I can do this for a long time. But I just find it's such a good way to get general and specifically warm for the session. It's a little bit different than doing multiple reps because you're taking that time in between each rep rather than holding onto the bar. Just a different stimulus altogether. But again, it's just a very effective way to warm up. A lot of elite weightlifters kind of lift like this. This 
So, yeah, I'm gonna do, I'll do three reps here, but I wouldn't call this a triple. I don't know. It's just like you're shooting hoops or something. You just take a jump shot, take some time, take another jump shot. Right, you can take some time. There's no stress of like keeping this set together, but you're still moving. Now there is a stimulus when you do doubles and triples, but we're not actually going for that here. It's more just a tactic to warm up and practice more. Uh, I just want to take the time also here, guys, to thank you for popping by and watching. It means, it really does mean a lot. Like, I love thinking about, like, my core audience. They always catch the Lyft companions. <clears throat> They're always very supportive and, like, it, like, just, it warms my heart to think about that, you know? The, the game of YouTube is a very interesting one. When you decide to play it, you have to. You have to play it in order to grow your audience. Okay, so when you decide that you're going to play it, you mean now you have to grow your audience. If you're going to grow your audience, you have to do certain tactics and deploy certain things. And you know, one of them is thumbnail, title, watch length, all of those things and you attach your worth to the viewership, the subscribers game, the, the revenue per month, and if those things ever start to, to go down, you start to question a lot of things, but you forget that your core audience is still fucking there. And they might be bigger than ever. And so like, I just, I have to stop and say thank you to those people who are here. If you're new, like, and you wanna become that type of person, that'd be great, but, um, I just, I, I love thinking about that, you know? It helps me so much. It really, really does. And if you guys like this kind of style of video, I have no issues doing it, you know? I'm a classic overthinker. Like, I've erased so many videos off of my camera because I'm like, oh, that's not good enough. And like, maybe they were good enough, you know? So, um, yeah, if you guys like this, I mean, I'm gonna take some videos tomorrow of the seminar in my biggest seminar ever, my biggest seminar yet. Okay, I'm gonna do one rep, see how it feels. See if I can kind of coach myself through an adjustment on the second rep, if I need to. What I'm gonna to try to do here is play with the line of how high I can keep my hips while also not getting too far over the bar. Let's get those hips up a little bit higher than the last few reps. Right here, there we go. Felt all right. I'm just weak. <laughs> I'm just weak, you know. It's all right. We're just bowling. We're just having fun. Here we go. Oh, that was much better. Cool. Okay. Okay with that one. God, this shit's fun. Holy shit. I'm telling you guys, lowering your expectations is the greatest hack I've ever fucking, it's the greatest hack ever.
uh, people might hear that, lower your expectations, and they'll be like, think of that as some sort of negative, but like they really don't understand. The very word expect is one that you should not fuck with. Don't expect anything to come to you. Nothing. No one owes you shit. No one in this world owes you anything. And if you can accept that, it's actually very freeing. Um, but I do feel like you might owe the world the best version of yourself. Yeah. So, if you were to take that idea that no one owes you anything and be a very, have like a very nihilistic way of viewing the world and become very negative, you would in part be giving the worst version of yourself and that would not be good. So I think it's our obligation to give the world the best version of ourselves. And if you do that, dude, you literally can't lose. But if you expect the best of the world, you will lose. It's just a matter of time. You see how that, that works? It's a very one-sided thing. And uh, I don't know, man. Today's a great example of it. I turned on the camera and was like, I gotta record something. I don't expect this to be very great, but I feel very good about this video. I feel very good about my snatch technique today. And that's because I expected nothing. Nothing was gonna be given to me. So that's my philosophy for you guys. <laughs> God damn, is it good, it's beautiful out here. Next to the garbage can, cause I got my garbage lifting going on. Oh, I really wish you guys could be out here with me. Fucking, we could be snatching. I miss Dylan, dude. God damn it. Can you imagine Dylan Cooper in this right now? In this scenario? <laughs> Forget about it. That guy owns this spot right here. Don't worry, we'll get drive, driveway videos back. Driveway lift companions are, are coming back. With special guests, probably. All right, gotta focus up here. 90 kilos is not an easy task for me these days. Wow. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> wow. Come on in. Oh. What's this? Can I be part of this? Yeah. What are you doing? Just getting some lift. I want to be. Can, why am I? <laughs> look at can you, I not be? Snazzy. Hey, look I wanna, at, let's blur out these drinks, Alex. Don't give him any. Credit. No, these are. This is the most important part of the video. Yeah, blur it. Blur it all. Don't blur it. What if I do this really quickly? Bet you can't blur it now. <laughs> 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 what are you doing? I want to be, why wasn't I told uh, that I could have been a part of this? Okay, actually the topic of the video- Get out of the way, let me, make, make me be you. in the way. Make me be first. <laughs> I need to show you this video, I need, I need you to, Okay, so the idea is weaponized specificity, one of the terms of the charlatan's playbook, okay? okay? Uh, people using their specific jargon or whatever to uh, encapsulate general generalities okay. and like say that all general things are bad. Yep. yep. Okay. Yep. So this is. <laughs> I need to. This is a chiropractor. Up, guys? Another way we train the art of chiropractic in KTC is. What is this? Gym. 
The average human what is this? About 10 to 12 pounds. So grab a kettlebell, hang on to that thing, and work on putting your body what in the best position. What is this? Bro, she's a chiropractor. Why is that person wearing a gi and this person's <laughs> wearing leggings? <laughs> What's that? This is like some Dragon Ball Z shit. Bro, I this is these, That's Kamehameha. Okay, so this this is what I'm saying is like, oh, um if it's not <laughs> That's fucking what I was expecting it to do. If you're if it's not exactly specific to the thing that we want to accomplish, it's not worthwhile. So she's literally holding a kettlebell and practicing Whoop. her I'm her doing snaps. it here. Whoop. Oh shit, that's good. Whoop. Hey. <laughs> Absolutely batshit crazy. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna hit this lift and then we're done with the video. Okay. Bye. 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 Off to the pool he goes. Yep. I'm a water creature. Did we keep that in, Alex? That was fucking pathetic. That was like incredibly embarrassing. Keep it in, Alex. I gotta be about that life. I have to be about that. That was fucking pathetic. This is an unacceptable level of body fat. Late night foods for me uh, were a big problem. All right, here we go. Let's get this fucker going, you know what I'm saying? I think if I'm just like overall more aggressive at extension, I'm gonna slam dunk this way. That'll have to do. Guys, I appreciate you coming by so much, honestly. Let's keep this train rolling. My mentality around content creation is just like always changing and it's always kind of affecting who I am as a person and I like to be able to have that sort of discussion that I was having at the end. It's very therapeutic and uh, I hope it helps you guys too. Um, if you're new here, subscribe. Uh, if not, keep on watching. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Okay.